Meet Murphy. Hi. He's a happy dog in his golden years, but to his owner, Chris Dapowski, Murphy is living proof that 3D printers will change the world. I just call him my bionic dog because that's what he is. Half of his skull is bionic. Science fiction is now become science reality. Not long ago, Murphy's reality was grim. It was like this hard ball on the top of his head. It's almost like it appeared out of nowhere. And then it turned out to be this very rare form of cancer. Basically, what they have to do is take part of the skull out. Now, I kind of went into this panic state, like, OK, where do we go from here? Chris's search led her to the University of Guelph. Here, veterinary surgeon Dr. Michelle Oblak is pioneering the use of 3D printers to help prepare for the most complicated operations. So this is Murphy. This is his exact skull. We've actually taken the CAT scan specifically from him, and we've printed this model. So this is the tumor in red. And so as you'll notice, when we remove the tumor and that portion of bone to get to the deeper surface, there's quite a bit of Murphy's brain as well as the front of his sinus exposed. So it's a pretty big area that we need to cover. To rebuild Murphy's skull, Dr. Oblak also used Murphy's CAT scans as a template to create this, a 3D printed plate custom built out of solid titanium. In Murphy's case, because we had this 3D plate, we could go ahead and just create the plate to fit perfectly. It fits very easily and like a glove right onto that surface. To truly appreciate Murphy's miracle, go back about a decade to when 3D printing was widely seen as a gimmick. Today's 3D printers are bigger, faster, and smarter than ever. The phrase 3D printing is an umbrella term for the multitude of technologies that use computer models to create solid objects, one layer at a time. Material extrusion is what most people picture 3D printing to be. A liquefied material is squeezed out through a nozzle and then hardens, and a solid 3D shape is born. This is the least expensive and least refined way to 3D print. With vat polymerization, a beam of UV light is scanned across a vat of liquid resin, curing it instantly. This technique creates smooth surfaces with delicate details, but is mostly limited to plastics. Then there's powder bed fusion. Here, the material is a fine powder, and when it's hit with an energy source, the individual grains fuse together. This creates high quality and complex objects out of plastic, ceramic, or even metal. That's what they do here at Anubis 3D in Mississauga, Ontario. It really feels like when you're a kid and you're baking cookies and you just want to watch it through the oven door and wait for it to be ready. The only thing that you cannot open it now you because we lose the batch. <laughs> Let's not spoil the batch. Tharwat Fouad started this company in 2012. Since then, his industry has completely transformed. We spent years trying to um, push the technology, and it wasn't happening. Right now, it started to become um, accepted as a mainstream manufacturing process. 3D printing, aka additive manufacturing, offers some enticing advantages over traditional techniques like less waste, reduced operating and production costs, and increased speed. The time it takes to design for the additive is longer, but the manufacturing time is a lot less. The manufacturing process in additive manufacturing is days, same day, two days. If you go out with the same equivalent part to a CNC shop and say, I need this part, it's a couple of weeks. So the fact that it's much faster must be great news for your customers. What are you hearing from them? This was um, a very nice surprise uh, for the very early stages. Uh, the first time, the second time. But then after that, they start ordering very late. So they're disappointed that you cannot deliver it the same day. They've been a little spoiled. <laughs> yeah, they, <laughs> that's the point, yeah. 
The ability of on-demand manufacturing to reduce overseas production and shipping costs could be a game changer during a supply chain crunch. And there's another advantage to this technology. You can also do things that are uh, small but very intricate. The red piece comes out with all the gears and the shafts inside it, and they're able to rotate right out of the machine. As the moving parts in a sub-assembly printed as one piece, those are things you cannot do with machining. It's impossible to do with machining. 3D printing is creating a world of possibilities, and not just in the manufacturing sector. Hey, Cam, we're uh, two layers away. Deep in the BC interior, Jim Zimlansky and his team at Twente Additive Manufacturing are using a specially built 3D printer to flip the world of construction on its head. So 3D concrete printing will play a very important role in the future of affordable housing. The construction industry is one of the largest industries in the world and uh, it's ripe for automation. Automation, once again, cuts down on labor dramatically, making it easier, faster, and therefore cheaper to build a home. You know, it's like a photocopier. You can hit copy, copy <laughs> as much as you like. To prove their technology works, Jim's team designed and built the first ever fully 3D printed home on Canadian soil. Welcome to the uh, Fibonacci house. From floor to ceiling, this place has 3D printed concrete everywhere you look. We've even uh, gone ahead and printed some of the fixtures in the building here. So here's a sink that we printed. And the Fibonacci house caught the eye of a BC community that's in need of some new homes fast. Oh my God, look at that. The people of Merritt suffered enormously in 2021, a summer of devastating wildfires followed by record-breaking floods. A lot of residents were displaced from their homes, uh, and they're still displaced. The city of Merritt has approached us and asked us if we would be able to assist with our technology. We'll be printing 20 homes in Merritt, and they'll be 550 square feet each. We've calculated the build time for each home should be uh, about 12 hours. If the Merritt project is a success, it could cement 3D printing as a solution to the housing crisis across Canada and around the world. It's like a, a new frontier where people can still imagine new things that people haven't imagined before. Meanwhile, in North Carolina, they're banking on the next big thing in biotech, 3D printing at the cellular level. If you take one human hair and split it down longitudinally 50 times, that's how small we can get in terms of the resolution. Dr. Anthony Atala runs the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. Their proprietary 3D printers use human cells as the raw material to print living tissues and maybe one day whole organs. Sounds like sci-fi, but it's real. The current organ shortage is very serious. In fact, over a 10-year period, the number of patients in the transplant list has gone up tenfold. Bioengineered organs could solve that problem, but historically, building a blood supply to the tissues deep inside complex organs, like the heart, liver, and lungs, was impossible. Now, 3D printing may hold the key. We print these cells layer by layer, one at a time, and by doing so, we also create this highway system, if you will, that brings nutrition to the central portion of that printed construct, allowing it to survive. As Dr. Atala and his team push the frontiers of biotech, what? what are you doing? What are you doing? Murphy the bionic dog is a reminder that 3D printers are already saving lives today. The surgery went really, really well. Within a week, he was back to his normal self. He has a 3D printed skull. It protects his brain like it's supposed to, and it's absolutely incredible. Things that we didn't even know were possible have now become possible. So 3D printing really is unlimited. It's really just limited by the imagination.